In a previous video, titled Electrophoretic Separation of Proteins, we demonstrated how a complex mixture of proteins could be separated using gel electrophoresis. In this video, we will show you four different gel staining methods for visualizing the location of the proteins in the gel. Hi, I'm Sean Gallagher from UVP, working with the Proteomics Center here at the Keck Graduate Institute. Today I'll be showing you a number of techniques for visualizing proteins after separation by electrophoresis. This includes Kamasi Blue, Silver Staining, Cypro Orange, and Cypro Ruby. So let's get started with Kamasi Blue first. The detection of protein bands in a gel by Kamasi Blue staining depends on nonspecific binding of a dye, in this case, Kamasi Brilliant Blue G250. In this method, proteins separated in a polyacrylamide gel are washed using high purity water. The location of the proteins is then detected using a water-based Kamasi Blue stain. The detection limit is 0.3 to 1 microgram per protein band. To begin, start with a polyacrylamide gel in which proteins have been separated by electrophoresis. While agitating slowly, place the polyacrylamide gel in a plastic container filled with 300 milliliters of high purity water. Leave for five minutes, discard, and repeat two more times. After the third wash, pour out the water and cover the gel with Kamasi Blue staining solution for one hour while agitating slowly. After one hour of staining, pour out the staining solution, rinse the gel briefly by placing in about 200 milliliters of water for 30 minutes. At this point, the gel may be stored in water for future imaging. The gel may also be dried at this stage to maintain a permanent gel record. To do this, place the gel on two sheets of Wattman 3mm filter paper and cover the top with plastic wrap. Then, dry in a conventional gel dryer for 1-2 to two hours at about 80 degrees Celsius. Another protein staining method is by silver staining, which we will demonstrate next. Although the Kamasi Blue staining method is easier and more rapid, Silver staining is considerably more sensitive with a detection limit of 0.3 nanograms BSA. The detection of protein bands in a gel by silver staining depends on the binding of silver to various chemical groups in the protein. The following protocol is based on the SilverQuest silver staining kit from Invitrogen. The protocol is derived from the fast staining protocol, approximately 30 minutes and represents one of the many kit-based chemistries used for silver staining compatible with mass spectrometry. In this case, we will be using an Invitrogen precast mini gel. Before beginning silver staining, make sure to wear gloves at all times to avoid fingerprint contamination. Place the gel in a microwave safe tray with 100 milliliters reagent grade water Briefly rinse and then pour off the water. Next, add 100 milliliters of fixative, composed of 40% ethanol, 10% acetic acid, in high purity water, and microwave for 30 seconds. The microwave process shortens the necessary incubation steps by accelerating the binding and staining. At this point, place the gel on a shaker and slowly rock for 5 minutes. After five minutes, pour off the fixative. Add 100 milliliters 30% ethanol to wash the gel. Microwave for 30 seconds and then place the gel on a shaker for five minutes. After five minutes, pour off the ethanol. Now, add 100 milliliters of sensitizing reagent. Microwave for 30 seconds and then place on a shaker for two minutes. After the two minutes, pour off the sensitizing reagent. Add 100 milliliters reagent grade water. Microwave for 30 seconds and place on a shaker for two minutes. 
pour off and repeat for a total of two wash cycles. Now, add 100 milliliters of staining solution. Microwave for 30 seconds and slowly agitate for five minutes. After the five minutes, pour off the staining solution. Add 100 milliliters reagent grade water. Skip the microwave step and place directly on a shaker for 20 to 60 seconds. Discard the water and immediately add 100 milliliters of the developing solution and develop until protein bands become visible with the background remaining clear. This will take approximately 5 to 10 minutes. At this point, add 10 milliliters of stopper solution to the developer to arrest the development. For best results, photograph the gel as soon as possible as there may be slight changes in color intensity and increases in nonspecific background elements over time. The gel you are seeing contains residual proteins after electroblotting. Dry the gel to maintain a permanent record or store in a sealable plastic bag. Next, we demonstrate a method for fluorescently staining gels. Fluorescent dyes have a number of advantages over traditional protein stains. Cipro orange protein gel stains, which we will outline here, can detect 1 to 2 nanograms of protein per band. This is more sensitive than Kamasi Brilliant Blue staining and as sensitive as many silver staining techniques. Fluorescent staining is straightforward with less hands-on time than typical silver staining protocols and is complete in under one hour. Stained proteins can be visualized using a standard 300 nanometer UV trans illuminator or a laser scanner. In this case, we will again be using an Invitrogen precast mini gel. To begin, prepare and separate proteins using SDS page, but use 0.05% SDS in the running buffer instead of the usual 0.1% SDS in order to reduce background fluorescence. To begin the staining procedure, pour Cipro Orange fluorescent staining solution into a small plastic dish. For one or two standard size mini gels, use about 50 milliliters of staining solution. It is important to note that staining dishes should be cleaned and rinsed well before use, as any detergents will interfere with the staining. Now, place the gel into the staining solution. Cover the container with aluminum foil to protect the dye from bright light. Gently agitate the gel at room temperature for 40 to 60 minutes. Discard the staining solution and then rinse the gel for less than one minute with 7.5% acetic acid, about 100 milliliters, to remove the excess stain from the gel surface. Destain the gel by incubating overnight in 0.1% tween 20. To visualize and photograph protein bands, place the fluorescently labeled gel directly on a standard 300 nanometer UV transilluminator or a blue light transilluminator. Next, we will demonstrate an alternative fluorescent staining method which uses Cipro Ruby fluorescent dye. The Cipro Ruby staining method was designed especially for use in two-dimensional page but has proven to be the most sensitive protein gel stain for standard one-dimensional SDS page. To begin, transfer the gel to a clean polypropylene or PVC dish of appropriate size. Incubate the gel in the appropriate amount of undiluted Cipro Ruby protein gel stain with continuous gentle agitation on an orbital shaker at 50 RPMs. Cover the gel and incubate for at least three hours. Transfer the gel to a clean staining dish and wash it once in a 10% methanol, 7% acetic acid solution. Recover and place the gel back on the rocker for 30 minutes in order to reduce background fluorescence and increase sensitivity. 
The gel is now ready to be viewed and photographed. I want to thank you for watching today's protocols. Today we've shown you a number of uh, different uh, procedures for visualizing proteins after electrophoresis. Some are very sensitive, such as the fluorescent staining and silver staining, and some are more routine, such as Kamasi blue staining. It's important to remember that uh, reagent purity is critical. Using ultra pure water is also very important. And also the timing on each one of the steps, uh, you need to pay close attention to that in order to get reproducible results. Also, that's it, and uh, good luck on your next set of experiments.